This Holy Mass is offered in memory of Helen Fernando, Wilton Fernando, Walter de Silva, Douglas Fernando, Salia Pereira, Ishanta Pereira, Lakshman Fernando, and Gordon Nadesan. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying of pain. All these things are gone forever. May their souls rest in peace, fondly remembered by all family members and loved ones. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children. I welcome all of you for this beautiful sacrifice of the Holy Eucharist. A blessed evening together with our living Jesus Christ who is among us who is resurrected and he is the one who leads us and who goes before us who is after us and who is with us and today he invites us to recognize him as the shepherd who is so compassionate who is so merciful and also invites us to be the same. It's with this little thought, dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children, that we begin this beautiful sacrifice of the Holy Eucharist. Let's now join our hands, close our eyes for a moment, and reflect over the sins that we have committed, and ask the good Lord to pardon and to forgive the sins that we have committed. Let's prepare for this Holy Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. in the highest and, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill we, we praise you we bless you we adore you we, adore you, you, we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory, glory. Lord, Lord God heavenly King O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father Lord, Lord Jesus Christ only, only begotten Son, Son Lord, Lord God, God Lamb, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. You, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are, you are seated, seated at the right hand of the Father, Father. Have, have mercy on us. For you, For you alone are the Holy One, one. You, you alone are the Lord, Lord. You, you alone are the Most High, Jesus, Jesus Christ, with the, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commandments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. War to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them and they shall fear no more, no more be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he, will, he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. 
and this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. The word of God. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby bringing the hostility to an end. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Oh, 
speak, Lord, your servant hears. You have the words of eternal life. Sing alleluia to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a lonely place by themselves. Now many saw them going and knew them. And they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. As he landed, he saw a great throng and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children, today is the 16th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, and we have a beautiful message from the living word of Jesus Christ. We understand and we know that Jesus, after he began his public ministry, he summoned and he made 12 apostles or 12 men who could support him. And then Jesus sent them to preach to the places, to various places where he was preaching and then also he sent the twelve and also few others who were supporting them. They were given an authority. They had the power to preach and also to expel the demons and also to cure the sick. With that much of power, they were sent. So they went, they preached, and they drove out demons, cured the sick, and then they returned. And there was a bit of a discussion between them with Jesus. And they reported to Jesus and said what happened and how they were following the words of Jesus and how they were active in preaching the gospel. Then soon they realized <clears throat> that there were also the people who were following them and very especially to see Jesus, a different man, a different kind of preaching they heard. 
none of the other leaders who were with them touched their hearts. But this man called Jesus and also his followers, they were really touching the hearts of the people. And the people moved by that preaching, they were following them. Even the gospel says that they followed and stayed before the apostles reached their places. But Jesus and the apostles, they wanted to go to a deserted place just to be alone, to get themselves settled in solitude, maybe in prayer, maybe in a formal discussion of what they should do in future. But they couldn't. People were gathering in numbers. Then Jesus, seeing this, Jesus had compassion towards them. He was really loving the people. And Jesus said, they are like sheep without a shepherd. My dear brothers and sisters, this is how Jesus responded to the needs of the people. And this is how, who, this is, this is how even Jesus responds today to us. Jesus himself the faithful shepherd of a new Israel, they saw Jesus as a teacher, kind of a leader who could touch them, touch their hearts. There were also the other leaders. The shepherd means the leader, not only the ones who are looking after the sheep, but even the leaders of the Israel or the Israelites were called shepherds. And the, but these leaders, maybe the political leaders at that time, maybe the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the people of the Sanhedrin, even the emperor, the governors, the people couldn't find anything special in them, dear brothers and sisters, because they pastured themselves instead of pasture in the people. This is what the people felt. But what is special in Jesus is that he was relating to his people in mercy. And he was leading the people by his powerful words. And Jesus, he was able to read the hearts of the people and to meet the inner needs of the people. This is something very special that they saw in Jesus, dear brothers and sisters. So they were following Jesus. Because in Jesus, even today, we see the living mercy of God visible in Jesus. He's so compassionate, he's so merciful. We see the living mercy of God visible in Jesus which is also tangible, which could be done. His words could be practiced in our day-to-day -day living, dear brothers and sisters. Dear brothers and sisters, all of us are in a way shepherds. All of us are Christians. All the Christians are called to be shepherds in some way. Then how are we to follow Jesus? First thing, be good as Jesus is good. This goodness is what God is. That is his essence. That is the character of God. The character of God is this goodness. He alone is good. And he is calling us through Jesus to live this goodness, to practice this goodness, to live a sinless life fulfilling his commandments which he preached to us through Jesus and today the words of the Holy Catholic Church listen to this we have to listen to the shepherds of today the real shepherds because there can be also the shepherds who can lead us astray this is very clearly said in the first reading dear brothers and sisters the point is to be good, to practice the supreme goodness of our Heavenly Father. 
And the second point is we understand Jesus, the good shepherd, he protected us and he protects us even today. And we as leaders, as elders, we have got to protect the youngsters, our children. They need proper guidance. They need to see in us proper words, proper action. A kind of a sound moral conduct in all of us, dear brothers and sisters. Show them the correct path. That is, a main, that is also a main character of the shepherd. In St. John's Gospel, I read, chapter 10, Jesus says, I give them eternal life. I give them, I give my people eternal life. They will never perish. They will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. This is very important, dear brothers and sisters. We must not allow our youngsters to get themselves prey into these unlawful situations and unwanted situations, immoral situations that is prevailing in today's society, dear brothers and sisters. We need to protect them. And the third point is we need to guide them. In Psalm 23, Psalm 23 says, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God is leading us to do the correct thing, nothing else, to do the correct thing. This is what we need to do and this is what we need to practice and at the same time, this should be the character that should be seen in us by our youngsters who are coming after us, who are coming after us, who is following us. Then the fourth point is, dear brothers and sisters, nurture. Nurture the youngsters. We have to give them the correct way of living, correct understanding of things. What the real Christian values are, because we might see certain things that are not in sound in their lives, that is in sound in their lives, we have to nurture them, we have to tell them what is correct, provide them exactly what they need to grow in faith, faith in Jesus Christ and faith in our Heavenly Father and to have a good conduct. And my final point, Jesus as the good shepherd, he even laid down his life. He sacrificed his life. This is what the shepherd is. Even the shepherds who look after the sheep, they go in front. Even if the wild animals attack the sheep, it's the shepherd who fight and protect the sheep, the flock. So dear brothers and sisters, let me quote the wordings of His Holiness. It's something very beautiful and this should be the verse for us to reflect throughout this week, dear brothers and sisters and my dear children. In our parishes, in our communities, communities mean maybe in our village, our surrounding, our neighborhood, maybe even in our families, in our associations where we work maybe, and movements wherever there are Christians, wherever there are the Christians, everyone should find an oasis of mercy. We cannot live without mercy, compassion, and love, dear brothers and sisters. This is the characteristic of the Good Shepherd. So, be good. Protect them. Protect our youngsters. Be a guide. Nurture them. And be a sacrifice. May God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters and my dear children.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all things, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God born, born of the Father before all ages, God, God from God, God light from light, true God from true God, God begotten not, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified, Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear children, let's pause for a moment in silence and continue in our prayers for the faithful. We will pray for the Mother Church, the country, and for all of us. May I request all of you to offer your personal prayers for all. Your response. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops, that they may have the hearts of true shepherds and guide the church closer to Jesus and into greater unity, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, listen to the prayer. For leaders of our country, that God may guide them to rule wisely and work with greater commitment for the welfare of the people, particularly the vulnerable poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, listen to the prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will strengthen those who are recovering from natural disasters or the pandemic, give hope to those who have lost their loved ones, and give peace to those who are mourning. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, listen to For the family who sponsored the broadcast of this Mass and for those participating in this Mass from their homes, that God will fill them with His grace and bless them abundantly, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, listen to the Let us pause for a moment in silence and pray for our own intentions.
This prayer we ask of you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, our Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Santus, Santus, Luminus, Santus, Luminus, Sabaud, Plenisu,
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray, let's pray for a moment in silence and remember all the souls departed. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and followed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who you takes take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, you are present and alive in the Most Holy Sacrament. At this moment, I am unable to receive you sacramentally. I desire you to come spiritually into my soul. O oh my Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Amen. shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms holding them carefully close to his heart leading them home let us pray Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, let me thank all of you for joining this Holy Eucharistic celebration. And let me also thank very specially all the sponsors who contributed lavishly to air this Holy Mass. And also the Verbum TV crew, 
led by Mr. Milan and all the others, and also our the beautiful choir. And good evening to all of you, dear brothers and sisters, and enjoy your evening today. And let me also remind you, soon after this, around 7.30, we will be starting another prayer service, a praise and worship program, uh, led by a few of our faithful here at Verbum TV. Thank you very much, and God bless you. God, God bless, bless you, you, Father. Father. Sing to my God, never ceasing. All my life I will tell of His wonders. He's a maker of all earth and heaven, of the ocean, the seas, and all they hold. Who oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good? Who oh, give thanks to the Holy Mass was offered in memory of Helen Fernando, Wilton Fernando, Walter de Silva, Douglas Fernando, Salia Pereira, Ishanta Pereira, Lakshman Fernando, and Gordon Nadeson. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. May their souls rest in peace, fondly remembered by all family members and loved ones. 